Okay, so we're gonna move on to another polynomial equation. Okay, and we are given this p x over three is equals to x squared plus x plus one, and we want to find the product of the roots to this equation over here. Three x equals to seven. Okay, now take a look at it and let's see what you can come up with. Okay, it asks us for the sum of all the values of x. It's the same way as the sum of the roots because the value of x would be the roots. Sorry, the value of x would be yeah, would be the roots. Okay. So by looking at this, we want this the equation we want to solve. Okay. So obviously the function p 3x, the function of p in terms of 3x gives us an equation, okay, in terms of x there. What I suspect is that we just simplify the equation to give us x squared, make that equal to 7, make it equal to 0, and then we find the roots. The problem is finding that equation from this one over here. Okay, I'm not so sure about a lot of theory because I know that I believe at an advanced level, which maybe if you're interested in, there's really a lot of theory and concept in terms of translation of functions. Okay, but we need to be extra careful because this function is a function p, but is the, the term or the variable, it is x, to the, x divided by 3. This one is function p and the variable is 3x. So we need to somehow manipulate this function so that we can get somewhat in terms of this and then we can solve it accordingly. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Okay, one way is finding a target. Okay, let's aim towards a target and the target that we'll aim towards is px here. Okay, this is the target. So we want to find this because in doing so, we can substitute 3x inside here and get the equation, as simple as that. So this is the target. Okay, now if this is the target and if it's 3x, just wait a minute or just think for a minute, if you will, this thing over here. Okay, px in terms, of, let's just say x squared, take away 4x, okay? I substitute a value inside there, 4, for example. 4 to the power of 2, 4 times 4. I substitute a value inside here, 5, equals to, say, 5 squared, take away 4, times 5. I substitute something inside, like x over 3. Okay, now you see, you got 4, 4, 4, you got 5, you got 5, you got 5. Now you got p, and you want to substitute x divided by 3. So, if I can somehow write this equation in terms of x over 3, I can get this one over here. Okay, now I'm trying, to te I'm trying to teach you to really think how to analyze it. Okay, you see, I put in 5, I got 5 and I got 5. So I put in 4, I got 4 and I got 4. I put in x, I got x and I got x. Now down here, I'm going to put x divided by 3. So if I can write this equation in the form of x to the 3 in the places where there's an x, okay, I should be able to kind of reduce the whole equation to the one I want to find. I hope you understand that. So why don't I just show it to you directly so you can see, see what I mean. Okay, remember our goal is to somehow fit inside, if, if there's such a term, that x divided by 3. So we've got px over here. Okay, bearing in mind that our goal is this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put x over 3 squared. Okay? Wow, that changes everything, doesn't it? Because that certainly doesn't look like that. But just wait a minute, just think for a minute, if you will. x squared divided by 9, 3 squared, which is 9. So why don't I just simply compensate by putting a 9 over here? Now, doesn't this equal to this over here? It certainly does. Do the same for the other one. I put in an x over 3. I compensate it by multiplying it by 3 to give me x. And then this one can remain as a one term. So this is what I get. I put in this, I put the I put x over 3 inside the function, I get this, I get this. Does that mean that this is equal to this over here? Certainly does, because like I said, this is the variable x. I can put I can put anything inside there. So I can I put x divided by 3, that's what I got. I can just deduce it to say that this is the function. 
So given that this is the function now, I can immediately go and solve the problem, which is 3x, so 390 will be 81x squared plus 9x plus 1, this is equals to 7, okay, and then 81x squared plus 9x plus 1, sorry, then bring the 7 over, so it will be minus 6 equals to 0, divide throughout by 81 so that we get one a constant x squared term over here this becomes x over 9 minus 2 over 27 i believe that's correct and what do we want we want the sum of the roots employing the zero coefficient relationship which i hope you understand or which i hope you're familiar with sum of the roots is simply the term minus negative of the of the term after the first one so it's the second term, the coefficient, which is 1 over 9, minus, so it's minus 1 over 9 here. And this is the answer, sum of the roots. Sum of the roots is minus 1 over 9, that's the answer. Okay, that is easy enough to understand. Now, I'm going to show you the intuitive method, or the much easier method, if you really see what I mean. Okay, I thought this one up myself, and... The, the, I'm not too sure whether it is correct, so if you can find any flaws in it, you let me know. But interestingly enough, this method really works and it's a really fast method. Okay, I don't know whether am I breaking any laws of algebra, but let's see how it goes. See, I can put anything, x, the value of x, I can put anything inside there. So, to go from here to here, most logically speaking, what I would choose for, that, for x over there would be 9x. Okay, because 9x, 9 divided by 3, I get a 3. So I can immediately go from here to here if I substitute 9x inside x. Likewise, put it here and here. So the function of 9x divided by 3 is equal to 9x. So it's 9x squared plus 9x plus 1. And this is equals to 3x, 9 divided by 3 equals to 81x squared plus 9x plus 1 equals to 7, solve accordingly. And there we go, as easy as that. So, that is the way that I chose to solve the problem, and I really like it, because well, first I thought of it myself, really is to recognize the, the how functions work. You got, you got a certain thing over here, a certain variable, and you choose what you want to put inside the variable, okay? Or more specifically, choose what you want to put inside the unknown variable, such as x, and you put those same variables inside here. So to get from here to here, I want to put a 9x because 9 divided by 3 is 3. And that is how I think it works, okay? Now, I don't think I'm breaking any laws of algebra. If you, if, if, if I am, please email me so I, I know. But this is a really quick method. If you are running out of time, you can use this one right here. Okay, it's polynomial equation. I'll solve one.